Hello, welcome to Speech Talk Live. This is episode number 50. My name is Jay Oza. I'm the host of the show, and my co-host is Julie Wu Finkelstein. So we do this show uh, to talk about uh, speech-related topics, uh, such as uh, topics of discussion. That's what we're going to have today. And also uh, things that we're trying to kind of uh, help others who are in a similar situation, who want to speak in different in wide variety of situations. So we bring these topics here to discuss, and I discuss with, with uh, Julie. And uh, both Julie and I uh, have like multiple functions, actually. Both of us are mentors for the Coursera course, uh, Introduction to Public Speaking, which is an excellent course, which I highly rec <coughs> recommend if you are watching this video. It's a free course, but it's fairly comprehensive, uh, taught by uh, Dr. Matt McGarity, who is an excellent uh, professor out of University of Washington, and it's on the Coursera platform on demand. So you're on, you, you pretty much are on your own, and you can uh, do it at your own pace. Uh, we do this show for a number of reasons. One is that we, Julie and I, are both students of public speaking. We also like to teach others based on our learning. So you know, we're not like experts at a PhD level, but we may be a little bit ahead of you because we've been doing this now for you know more than a year. This show, as you can see, it's 50th episode, so we're getting close to one year. The other thing we do is we coach people who have to give a speech, which is can be very frightening. And <clears throat> it is important to have a coach when you have to give a high stakes or a high opportunity speech. There are things that we can pick up that you probably are not going to pick up on your own. Uh, the, the fourth thing is, uh, we also like to get better at it. So we practice, as you'll see, <coughs> we have recorded videos <coughs> for this show. And <coughs> Julie has recorded two videos. And the last is uh, we like to support people uh, because public speaking is scary. You're actually out in front, uh, you're being judged, and that scares people. It scares me, it scares everybody, it should scare you. Otherwise, if you don't care, if you don't take it seriously, then you're just winging it. So that's what we try to do. And uh, today we have three episodes. The first episode is related to something that Julie and I do occasionally when it comes to uh, coaching people who have to give a uh, high stakes or high opportunity speech. So I've kind of laid out a methodology which I wanted to kind of discuss uh, with Julie, like exactly if you have to give a high stakes speech, how much time do you need actually? And it can vary, but this is something that I put together uh, that we can have a discussion around and so you can get some idea. Uh, the second one, I think, Julie, this is your final. Uh, she's been recording this, uh, these integral hacks, these 12 poses that she's been working on. She's been recording a, a video, that two videos, the talk that explains the, the pose, and then the demo video where she demonstrates the pose. And this is her final uh, pose. I think uh, so she's been gradually improving, and I'll have Julie facilitate that session, kind of talk about it. And I think. Uh, by doing all these 12, I think she has really figured it out how to do it. So uh, I, I'd like to get Julie's point perspective on her journey through these uh, 12 videos that she's recorded. And the last uh, segment is something I put together. Uh, again, this is concept we always talk about, cold calling, right? Like you have to make calls to people. Uh, usually you think of telemarketers. But cold calling is really, I, I like to put quotes around it. Quote, Cold calling. Cold calling is something we all do all the time, by the way. We don't realize it. We all think that cold calling is like we have to make a sales call. Technically, almost all calls are like when you talk to people, it is like a sales call, right? Uh, and here I call call it the cold speaking. So let's say you're working on a speech. You've got to try it, test it out. Nobody's going to tell you, hey, uh, Jay, can you tell me what speech you're working on? You're going to have to cold, cold speak. <laughs> you have to bring it up in the conversation somehow, get the other person interested. And the reason for this is you can learn a lot. So I don't go into too much detail here, but it is a very good technique. A lot of the t ideas come from books that I've read on cold calling. And you kind of have to uh, be a fast learner because you don't have a lot of time. So I want to have a discussion around that, get Julie's perspective on it. So that's the, the show for today. And I'll give you a quick insight. Uh, it's something that I haven't done yet, but I'm thinking of doing starting this weekend. And it's part of my practice on how to become, uh, I guess you can bluntly call it smarter. And what I'm going to do is, uh, so what I, one thing I've already mentioned in the past that I uh, take my uh, 
iPhone and I listen to it when I go for my walk. And my walk, I take this cross country trail, which is about 3.5 miles. So it takes, and I don't walk fast because I want to finish what I'm listening to. Sometimes it's a podcast, sometimes it's a, an audio book, sometimes it could be an online course. So I'd like to at least do it, walk for an hour. So I just thought of another idea. I said, you know what I'm going to do is uh, take it to the next level. And I'm not even sure if I can even do this, but we'll see. So I'm thinking of taking a audio book, let's say if it's uh, eight hours long, and just go there and walk and then take a break and walk and try to finish it in like, like half a day. And again, on an iPhone, you can increase the speed to 2x to 3x. For me, 3x doesn't work. 2x is fine, it's fast, two times the speed of the actual recording because you can make out most of the words and after a while you do get used to it. So I'm going to try that and I will let you know how it works, whether I can even make it. So you can call it marathon learning, I guess. I don't know, walking learning. I don't know. I haven't come up with the right word. Maybe Julie has. So that's what I'm planning to do this weekend if the weather per permits. I don't want to do it if it's too hot and I'll let you know how it goes. So if it works, then it's something I might uh, ask you to try too. Uh, Julie, why don't you introduce yourself and then we can get this uh, first segment going. <clears throat> Good morning, Jay. Let's take a deep breath. So if you like to press your belly in and let exhale, and then breathe in and let your belly out. And then while I'm talking, please feel free to do a couple more. Three for me is kind of a magic number. So yes, thank you, Jay. My name is Julie Wu Finkelstein, and I put in the Wu because Otherwise, people think I'm German or something. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, I am about to finish the uh, 12 steps. So today, I'd like to talk about um, the last step, which is very important. And perhaps next week, we can uh, answer Jay's question, which is how to, um, what, what has this, how, what have these videos taught me? So today, my, uh, my insight is uh, is don't give up, keep at it. If you're stuck, just rest. So I'm going to use my book as an uh, example. Is I when I finish the, I always have a very optimistic vision of the anything I do because otherwise, if I if I really think about how hard it really is, I won't do anything in my life. <laughs> So it's kind of like a self-denial in a healthy way. Uh, but after I finished my book, I I, re I got some feedback which was useful, but not uh, not the whole of it. The message was, this book isn't useful. That's not what he said. That's what I got. But Jay, with your help, uh, you said it's a good book. Don't give up. Keep at it. So. But I didn't know what else to do because I could not just go right back and writing it. So I keep at it by uh, doing the videos. And so that was a, a nice creative way for me to uh, to feel. I, I have done the moves for about five to ten years. So I knew the moves inside out. But to feel the moves again in a way that I can communicate to the people and feel my own expression of that. So. Um, so sometimes even resting is fine, doing nothing because that's gestation. But in your own mind, do not say I'm giving up. Just say keep it. Oh, I'm taking a rest. I'm letting I'm letting the seed germinate. It's out of my control, but it's not out of my intention. So I think that's a very powerful and yet a peaceful way to go about um, making things happen in your life. So that's my message today. Keep at it, be at peace, let it germinate if you don't know what else to do. Thanks, Jay. <clears throat> All right, Julie, thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, a couple of comments uh, on what you just said. I think uh, what, what you said that you, you uh, somebody gave you some feedback uh, and you kind of uh, inferred uh, from what he said that the book probably liked certain focus or something like that. And I think that takes a lot of courage because I just uh, went through that exercise. And what happens is 
that when you're creating something, uh, you have to be ready to accept the feedback. And even though you may not like it, it may not be what you want to hear, but once you give that to somebody, you give them the permission to give you feedback. At that point, what you really need to do is just listen and just don't try to argue or anything. It's that that person now has the ball. That person now gets to tell you what you want to hear. They may not have all the right mannerisms or the words to, to explain what they're saying. That's not the point. The point is you have given that person the permission to give you the feedback, and your job is to just accept, listen to it. You don't have to take all of it, but listen to it, sleep on it, and see if there's anything there that the person said uh, it, it can be applied. And I just went through that exercise, and I think it 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 is tough. But until you do that, you can't really get better at it. You 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 got to be able to be able to know how to do that. So I think, uh, Julie, that uh, that the feedback that you've gotten for your book is is quite valuable. Sometimes you have to look at it from that person's perspective. Where is he or she coming from in giving you that feedback? And then. It, it, uh, the, the way I look at it, it should make you think. And if you think and then, then discuss it, but a lot of times what happens is that people cannot handle feedback. And that's that makes it very hard to create something. Uh, and that's the process that I'm kind of going through right now, uh, trying to get feedback to make my the book that I'm writing better. So uh, I think it takes a lot of courage. And that's part of, uh, and once you do that, that's also part of, growing as a person who's trying to create something. So that's how I would I would take it. That that gives you an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? I can now make it better. See if there is something there that can I can improve upon. And I'm sure there's a lot of things you can improve upon. So okay. So at this point I'm gonna take a, a brief pause and move to our first segment. Okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live. This is episode number 50, and this is the first segment. In this first segment, uh, I want to talk about the, the kind of the process. Like recently, Julie and I had the opportunity to coach somebody uh, who had to give a high, it was a high opportunity speech, but it could be a, a high stakes speech. And it gave it. it it gave me something to think about because this particular person, I don't believe, gave a lot of lead time. It, it was an important speech uh, that uh, she's giving to this conference. And I think it's going to be today or tomorrow. And I hope she does a great job. But it got me to think that if, if next time somebody comes to me, what should I tell that person realistically? And I think that if you're going to give a high stakes or high opportunity speech, the one thing you've got to really have first is time. You can't give a high stakes, high opportunity speech if you've got like two weeks uh, notice and plus you're doing other things. You just don't have enough time. So I came up with, and this is something that I'm going to be expanding upon later on, uh, not in this uh, discussion, but I think you need to at least give close to six weeks time. And the reason is that speech is like an incremental process. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to do it uh, today. I'm going to put the, you know, in the morning, I'm going to do this. In the afternoon, I'm going to do this. And in the evening, I'm going to do this. Uh, yeah, you could do it, but that's like you're cramming it. And remember, this is a high stakes speech. There's a lot writing on it. And also, if it's a high opportunity speech, it could change. It could make a big difference in your life. So you want to like give that much amount of time so that when it's when the time comes to actually give a speech, you will not be nervous. I mean, you'll be a little bit nervous, but you will have at least have gone through everything, saying, look, I did everything possible, and now just let it ride, you know? And that's that's how you want to be prepared when you are giving a high stakes or a high opportunity speech. So some of the things that I, and again, I think the ordering here may not be right, and I'm kind of thinking that what I put in, in, in this, uh, in my video was that, First, just get down your ideas. Like, what do you want to talk about? What is the main the main idea? And there's a whole process there. The first thing that I 
don't put this as a first thing, but I think it could be depending on how you want to do it. What, what I say in the first thing is that come up with a rough outline and just just talk, just do like kind of free talking, just get it out of the way, just record it, start to finish. So at least you have something recorded that you can look at and saying exactly, is this the way I want to sound? And remember, this is like your crappy first version. You're not going to like it and you shouldn't like it, but at least it'll give you some idea what you are working with. So that's what I came up with first. Now I had a kind of a thought that maybe the first thing should be to develop the message, but message development is actually can take a lot of time. I just want something done so you feel like there's a small win here, that I got something recorded, now I can just make it better. And then you want to work on your message. The, after you develop your message, the third thing you want to work on is work on the entire content, get the content done, so at least you know what you're talking about. Once you have the content done, then you can move into the different aspects of the delivery part, the performance part, such as your voice. You got to integrate it, right? The voice, the body language, the the, the, the gestures, and creating a memorable moment with a partic particular story, and maybe a signature moment in the speech where people can say that's what that speech is about. And then after you have all of that, you've got to give at least one week where all you're going to do is just get into the flow. So that if you somebody wakes you up at 3, 3 a.m. in the morning, you can get up and give that speech. You want to be that ready when you are giving a, that a high stakes or a high opportunity speech, because when you're out on the, when you're up on the stage, you want to have you know. I was just writing down, and I said there are only three things you really need to know when you get on the stage that you, you want to kind of go in because you have rehearsed it so well. There are only three words: breathe, pause, and joy. That's it. Breathe pause and enjoy. Those are the only three things you should be thinking about when you're on stage because everything else you have rehearsed it so well that like I said, I can wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning, call you and say, Julie, give me your speech right now. You should be able to do it and just keep those three words in mind. I got to breathe. I got to pause at appropriate places that you have identified and I got to have fun <laughs> because if you're not having fun being on the stage, the audience will say, this guy is like, you know, I don't think he's enjoying being up there. So those are the three things you want to keep in mind. And then the last thing I'll point out is after you give the speech, you want to kind of write down immediately the initial impression and then give some space and do an assessment, do a post-mortem because you want to be, this is a learning experience. So as you can see, the whole speech delivery is a lengthy process. You can't just wing it. And each of these things take time, okay? You gotta really, you, you gotta spend some time because giving a speech performance cannot be created overnight. It takes long time to create it. You gotta really keep on doing it, doing it, and then eventually you'll start feeling it too. And you gotta start feeling it so that when you're on the stage, you will know exactly how to move, where to move, everything is integrated. That's what actors do, right? When they're performing, everything is so well integrated that you don't even feel like, you feel like that's a real person. And that's what you want to really do. You want to come across like you're the real person. You are the person, you are the message. So so that's that's what I think is, uh, is really needed, that you need to give uh, uh, quite a bit of time if you want to give a, a good to great uh, high stakes or a high opportunity speech. So Julie, uh, I'll turn it over to you now. Uh, what do you think of it? Like uh, how much how much time and the preparation that's really needed uh, based on the people that you have worked with and some of the speeches you may have given uh, that you think is, is sufficient? Because uh, obviously we're not gonna, these are not like TED Talks. TED Talks, you know, they talk 300 hours. But I've come up with like you need, Focus on one aspect each week, and then you'll be ready. And then one week before that, all you're just doing is just rehearsing, so that when you get on the stage, you just are just you can just knock it out of the park. Go ahead. Thanks, Jay. Um, yeah, I, I think that this was a very refreshing title. In a certain sense, you're taking the lean speech method and taking it on to the show on the road. In the sense of the lean speech method, uh, you have the concept of these are the things you need to do and this is how you're giving the speech. And I, I get the sense you were focusing on the process. This one you're focusing on, um, you, you're still focusing on the steps, but really what you're saying is the experience at the end is important. 
So it's almost like uh, what I would call reverse engineering. Uh, in Stavi, uh, Stephen Covey's book says, begin with the end in mind, you know. Um, breathe, pause, and enjoy, yes. What, um, so I, I resonate with what you're saying. So I'm going to add my own piece to it is that um, when you first look at the project system life cycle, it's called, they call it the waterfall model. You know, you look at and there's five major milestones. And um, traditionally in the history of project life cycle, that's how it got started. But in reality, everything's happening at the same time time, right? Even when you're envisioning the project, you already have the end in mind, you already know the steps. So my friend uh, who is uh, a PhD in the IT area, he created this thing called the spiral model or the hurricane model in the sense that there's always a heart of what's happening right now, whether you're doing a message or where you're doing a rehearsal, or where you're envisioning the speech, or where you're cultivating the experience. But surrounding it, what's happening all the time is all this whole process that's churning and churning. And I think that's the basic underlying idea of the agile model, the ROB model. In, so that's one thing is like, it's the, the concept is great in implementation. It's actually much more dynamic than that. But I think you have to start with the concept you uh, put down, which is the major milestones. Get started. <laughs> um, get the message clear. Get the components flow organized. Practice and rehearsal until it's clean and then enjoy the experience. Those are the milestones I get and then do a post-mortem. Well, I want to add to, that's what, uh, what, that's what I got out of your model. What I want to add to it is an underlay, lay, underlying level, which I'm going to start the, um, we're finished on, as you know, I have this reading and discussion event on Saturdays, and we're finishing our current book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So I'm moving it into more of a discussion, reading, and project uh, practical application orientation. And I think no matter what we're doing, even when I'm talking here or doing a speech, there's always an underlying river that's running through. And that is, am I being me? Are you hearing me? Am I credible to you? Am I telling you something about me that you like? So in addition to the um, message, there's a relationship going on between me and the audience. And you want to create this message that flows through in your life. And you definitely want it in your public speaking. So my next project in the Saturday's reading and discussion group will be called finding out your authentic attributes and your strengths and communicating that by branding yourself that way. So if I want to show that I am uh, systemic, you know, I'm just making up words here, I'm creative and I'm a good listener, those are attributes of me that has to come through every time I interact and certainly in my speeches. So I think Look underneath the message, the information. Look at what you want and what your relationships are in any speech, large or small. But especially important, large, because your impact is scaled up to such a massive level. So that, that's what I have today. <clears throat> as far as, uh, so one of the, one of the things that, uh, that I'm interested in finding out from you is, uh, like, let's say you have to give a speech. Somebody comes to you and says, Julie, I have to give a speech. How much time do you think, uh, don't assume anything, assume nothing, that you just know that the person has to give a speech, then you have to work with what you have, okay? How much time, and the person says it's a, it could be a high stakes speech, it could be a high opportunity speech, because you know what? People like are not going to be like you and me are going to go through the entire uh, development, developing the public speaking skills, right? Because that could be a very lengthy process. But somebody has not gone through that and they come to you and say, Julie, I need your help. How much time do you think 
that that person really would need in order to be ready to do the maybe not great job but let's say at least get them into the good part good side so the person can at least do a good job uh, whether when the, that person is giving a, a high stakes or a high opportunity speech, how much time do you think that person really needs? Um, I know it varies, it varies, but I mean, what do you think is a reasonable amount of time that that person, because everybody that has, has to do, do these kind of speeches, they also have a lot of other things going on. So the, the thing is, how much time do you think that, uh, that is reasonable that that person can deliver a good speech? Jay, I, I'm going to take this from a different perspective uh, than you do. What you are saying is someone comes to you um, and say, I need just coaching skills. I need you to help me put together a speech and deliver it with great aplomb. And you, what I hear you say is, don't come to me, and I'm making it dramatic here, don't come to me if you have less than six weeks because he ain't just going to work. Um, I, my own experience is like when I have given speeches, and I've given speeches at, uh, you know, at a uh, user group called Guy International. I've given some speeches at local user groups. Frequently, the preparation itself takes years, because like there's a project I'm doing, and I'm speaking on that, it's, you know. On the other hand, I could be asked to stand up and talk about that uh, for 10 minutes at an impromptu invitation. So my own personal practical experience of public speaking is that you got to be prepared all the time, but it could take years to get there, kind of like Winston Churchill's uh, position with the war, right? I take my whole lifetime to do it. What I'm doing right now is very interesting with a couple of people. I'm going to do, develop it into a more program oriented. Is there are people like one, as I mentioned, this musician friend of mine and a coach, uh, coach friend of mine, they are working with me uh, to develop the message and their identity. So I have them, I give them questions because I know what I think would drive them toward the articulation of their identity. They do a video and I evaluate that. And so that is, um, you know, in fact, there's a person who says I'm making a speech, she drove that. So I want to prepare the people I coach that they have a great message before they even go, and that they're comfortable in public, they have a great message, and that they will be a presence in YouTube, and then opportunities will come, and they will come, they will come forth as a, a professional and excellent speaker in the industry of their expertise, you know, in the coaching area, in the musician area, my musician friend will be expected to do TV interviews. So I don't want him to do that six weeks from then. I want him to start now because that's his vision. I already know that that's a major contributor to his uh, success and his visibility. So I start now. I started last month, you know. Right. <clears throat> the, the, reason, the reason I ask that is that a lot of times, the people that, uh, well, one thing you can do is saying, hey, since you didn't develop the public speaking skills, I can't help you, okay? I can only help people who have developed the skills, and then I can focus on uh, uh, on the speech because you, you will at least have all the knowledge and you have gone through and tested out all the different speeches, so now I can help you. I think that's that's asking a lot, if you ask me, because a lot of the people don't do that. So anyway. This is a pretty big topic, and I think we covered just the same. Yeah, I agree. I guess I am saying that. I'm saying that if you have a speech that you need to do in quick time, go to Jay. <laughs> and I'll say, okay. No, I, I, think, I, think, I think this is a very important point because uh, a lot of people, I mean, let's face it, Julie, you, you and I come across these type of people they wait till the last moment. They are not going to go through the Coursera course or some of the things that you and I have discussed is regarding 
you know, the 330 develop it into habit. We do this uh, every week, so we know how difficult this is. Yeah. But a lot of people out there, they're focused on their job, on their uh, expertise. And because of that, they think that when there is an opportunity, to, they all want to give a speech because they realize how it could change their life. It could be a big step for them. But they just don't realize uh, how much time they would need to spend. So that's the reality. That's not what ideal situation, but that's the reality that I think most of the people that we are going to coach are going to be in. They're going to come to us and saying, I got a speech to give. And then we'll ask them, well, when is it? Well, it's in a couple of weeks. And we are like, oh, no, <laughs> this is not going to this is not going to go well. A <laughs> couple of weeks here we spent. This is our 50th episode and you got a couple of weeks. <laughs> OK, good luck. You know, and it's it's it, the, the thing I'm pointing out is that that you only get one shot. Like you said, uh, when you want that visibility and nowadays with the video, uh, Internet, YouTube, it gets recorded you're not going to go and be able to erase somebody's video that's been posted. So you're stuck with it. You've got to, you, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you are how you look, right? <laughs> so, all right, Julie, Julie thanks a lot. I uh, appreciate your, feed, uh, your input into this. And at this point, uh, like I said, this is a big topic and we just kind of covered it. We'll have to revisit this again. And I'm sure we will because uh, coaching, People who have to give a, a speech is a common theme on the show. And that's what we're here for. And we're trying to tell you that this is, uh, gonna, uh, if you have time constrained, at least try for six weeks. So that way you're not under pressure at the end trying to get it done. You can do it once in a while, but uh, you never know when you're on the stage what can happen if you're not well prepared. It's a totally different animal. All right, at this point, I'm going to take a brief pause and we'll move on to our second segment. Okay, welcome back uh, to Speech Talk Live, episode 50. My name is Jay Oza. I'm the host, and my co-host is Julie Wu Finkelstein. In the second segment, uh, we're going to uh, continue with uh, Julie's uh, uh, integral hack uh, show and tell video that she's been working on for the past 12 weeks. This is the last one, and I'm going to turn it over to Julie to kind of talk about her journey. I mean, not journey, just this particular specific video. I think next week uh, she'll talk about what it was like starting from the first one to the 12th one. What did she learn? And did she see an improvement from the beginning to the end? So for this one, I will at this point turn it over to Julie to talk about this particular uh, videos uh, for this uh, pose that she has recorded. All right, Julie, take it over. Thanks, Jay. So I, today I want to talk about the pose itself a little bit because it's so powerful and yet so easy. Um, also, I want to um, leave plenty of time for your feedback, and I just want to acknowledge one of the suggestions which I implemented and the impact on that. So the sequence will be, I'll talk about the move, I'll talk about your suggestion and its impact, and the third one is uh, receiving your feedback. So this is um, the last move. It's what I call the resting of the repose or recollection reorganizing move. I know that's a lot of terms, so um, I apologize for that. So basically, this is the end of the row. This is a 12 pose. But in all 12 poses, this one particularly so is you can do them standalone. And this one is very significant, and I want to emphasize uh, the importance of it because it appears so easy and in our society of action we might say oh I've done the work I just leave and I want to use the metaphor of you've done the work but you got to take the money to the bank otherwise you, you don't have it so this is the taking the money to the bank uh, move which is apparently very simple lie down make yourself comfortable you might want to prop something on your head or your knees so that you relax stay awake as much as Excuse me. Stay awake as much as you can and do deep belly breathing. Keep your eyes open or closed deliberately. And you will find that um, once you get that going, much like the centering pose, um, you will be able to integrate that into your life. So my example was, um, is uh, what I want to talk about was Jade, um, in terms of your suggestion and how it was uh, 
how, how I did it and the impact is you suggested that I add this little breathing or something to get people engaged. I haven't had a chance to add something for them at the end simply because five minutes is not a lot of time. But um, I thought it was very creative and um, it connects to some idea that to be developed of a signature or branding of who I am so when people see, uh, connect me to this type of process. And the interesting thing was I posted um, the video on Facebook and my niece who is a VP at uh, Morgan Stan uh, either JP Morgan I think J no Morgan Stanley in IT whose life is very stressful maybe she's not a VB she was one but then you know uh, she quit her job but anyways the whole point is her life is very stressful and so she um, she she put it on the Facebook that she started doing the breathing because because she saw you know, she just said she started breathing, and I want to underscore that because I put it because of your suggestion, I put it on the Facebook, and someone from my family benefited. And not only that, who knows how many other people were slightly shifted into with that orientation. So I just want to acknowledge that and say, uh, in this case, there was something explicit, but we never know how far our actions are impacted, especially before we do it. So, uh, say thank you and get feedback. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate you on finishing these 12 uh, poses. I mean, again, consistency is very important, and uh, you should be proud of that, that you did the 12, and I think uh, you kind of uh, uh, you know, were very transparent, you were very vulnerable, you went through it, showed exactly what it was like the first one to the twelfth one, and it takes a lot of courage to do that. A lot of people don't like to, and that's why I think you're kind of moving into a different level where you're basically are being very authentic, saying to people, look, you know, I'm not an expert here, I'm basically like you, but I'm going through the effort. It's the effort that I'm enjoying. Some of it is not going to be good, but at the end, you got to stick to the effort, and if you stick to it, then that is your reward. I think there's some philosophy behind that, and I think that's what the, this shows. And if you notice it, you made incremental improvement. And the last one, I think you really, really showed how confident you are in your message, uh, and I think you found your voice here. I think you should listen to these last two videos. The talk video was just amazing. I think. When I was listening to it, I said, wow, is that the same Julie that, <laughs> that I saw in that first video? Uh, you, 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 you came across somebody who knew what she was doing, but at the same time, there was a lot of empathy that, uh, that you really believe in this. And it came through clearly. It wasn't like something like, I'm so unsure of this. I'm not 100% sure whether this. You were just confident. You were empathetic. And you were really there to serve the people that are watching the video. And that came through very clearly to me. And I think uh, I would basically follow that in all your future videos that my purpose is threefold. If I can achieve these three things, then I will feel happy that I serve my purpose of recording this video because I want to help people. I want to be authentic. I want to put everything on the line. And, and I'm going to be confident because this is my voice. This is what I believe in. And I think that's what I got from it. And just that mannerism kind of attracted me to watch the video more closely because I'm like, wow, I better listen to this woman. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that was very important. And I think what I really like about uh, what you've done, Julie, is that you're willing to try new things. You're willing to take some risks and incremental risk, but you are willing to take the risk. You're not just saying, hey, you know, this has worked, so I'm just going to stick with it. Uh, I think you're saying, I know what's working, but I'm willing to test myself. And 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 I think that's a very good quality. Uh, and I don't know if this is something you do a lot, but now I'm noticing it because I've seen the entire journey. And that's something you can talk about next week. Uh, what did you learn from recording these 12 videos about yourself? Because this was like a continuous theme, all 12 videos, that now what you plan to do for the next, then you actually 
work on the book. And I think this will help your book a lot, I think. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, that now you have it on the video, you know exactly how do you want to communicate this message. So I, again, congratulations. I mean, this is a, 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 a good accomplishment. You stuck with it. You did all the 12 poses. And the only thing now is to just learn from it and see uh, uh, how you can make it better. Like some of the things that you just mentioned, you know, what is the, uh, the signature? Because these are the things you tested here. So now when you make this a companion video to your book, you'll know exactly the format to follow. And then after that, maybe in the next book, you can change it around and saying, okay, I like what I did here, but now I think I can do something better. And the key thing is by doing it, you're learning. And this kind of ties into the next topic we're going to turn into like cold speaking. By doing it, you are now learning that I can uh, make improvements. So Julie, uh, any closing thoughts uh, on, on this? Uh, and then we can wrap this up. You're muted. I agree with what you're saying. I just want to appreciate the space you create and the personal attention you've given me in my in the support of this project. And you know, and I know, this is only stage one. So thank you for future support as well. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's important that. Uh, because I, I really believe in this. Uh, I think her name is, uh, she's a professor at Harvard, Teresa Amabile. She's a professor and she wrote this book. Uh, I don't know if the book is called Small Wins, I think. And I think in life, uh, we need small wins. We always want the big win because everybody looks at the big win like, oh, he's a big winner. But in life, to succeed yourself, in, inwardly, you need small wins. Every day is a small win. This is your small win because you went through, recording each one 12 videos is a small win. But now when you add it all up, it turns into a much bigger win. You have a body of work now. And once you have a body of work, you can then tweak it, make it better. So I think uh, this is a very good example on, on how to do it right. And this is what we try to do on this show, right? We try to, every show we finish, is a small win because we did it. <laughs> and little by little, you know, at the end of the show, we will have uh, done 50 shows. And that's adds up, you know, each time it adds up, right? Uh, it's like a grain of rice. You keep adding it and you really don't realize how, what, how many, uh, you know, like how many rice uh, that adds up to after a while. So at this point, Julie, I'm gonna take a, unless you have any anything else to say, I'm gonna take a brief pause and we'll move on to our uh, last segment. Okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live. This is episode number 50. This is third, the third segment. My name is Jay Oza, and uh, I'm the host of the show. My co-host is Julie Vu Finkelstein. And in this third segment, uh, it's a topic that I kind of thought about uh, because I'm kind of big into uh, that a speech is something you just don't go out there and give it until you have it tested. And one of the ways to test is, is some concept I came across from sales. And in sales, one of the things that people always tell that you have to be good at is cold calling. Now, a lot of people hate cold calling, and that's why they can't sell. But let's face it, we're all salesmen, right? That's the new thing. According to Dan Pink's book, we're all in sales now. To sell is human. I think that was his book. So if you want to be, if you are a salesman, the, one of the, the things we all do is we have to cold call. Now, we don't like to think of it because that word kind of scares the hell out of people like, oh, cold calling, rejection, rejection. As soon as I call, they'll hang up on me because that's what we do to other people, right? As soon as they call, it's like, not now, get lost. You know, that's what we do. So we think like, oh my God, it's going to come back to us now. So we don't like cold calling, but cold calling, in my opinion, is the most important skill for success in anything because cold calling means that you don't know whether that you're going to get rejected. That's it. That's what cold calling is. Now, rejection is not bad, right? Rejection is like golf. Golf's a game of misses. Life's a game of rejection. Every rejection, there's something to learn. And it's that learn. You see, a lot of people hate cold calling because they don't want to learn. They're scared. Like, if I cold call you, you got to say yes. Otherwise, I'm a failure. No, that's not what the cold calling is all about. That if somebody gives you a script and you keep doing it, yeah, then you are going to be rejected. And then it becomes a numbers game. When I look at cold calling, to me, what that means is that every time I cold call somebody, 
there is certain information that I'm extracting from that person. So I've taken this concept and I said, well, why can't we do the same thing when we're working on a speech and you're working on multiple speeches? Let's say you have a message, you have this, you have that. Like every speech, I like to chunk it into three minute speeches, right? So you got like uh, lots of different elevator speeches, if you want to call that the three minute speeches. You got lots of elevator speeches. And you should somehow, it's something we have discussed in the past, but you've got to somehow bring it up when people are not expecting. It's like cold calling, right? You get a call when you're not expecting. That's what cold calling is. It's cold. It's coming out of nowhere, right? Well, that's what you should be doing also. And you might say, well, Jay, like I, I can't just go and talk about something the other person's not interested. Well, get them interested. <laughs> They're not going to tell you, hey, Julie, can you tell me about your last pose number 12? They're not going to do that. You've got to say, hey, you know, I did something very interesting. I just recorded a video uh, on this integral yoga pose. And then person, if he has any sense of uh, social skills, will say, oh, really? What was that about? Boom, you got in now. You're in. <laughs> That's your cold speaking call you just made. So at that point, and I like Julie to try that. She should try that, saying, hey, Jay, let me tell you about this uh, video that I recorded. And it would be a good practice for Julie to kind of try it on me. And that way she can cold speak about this work that she just recently did. Make it short. Don't get too bit too long. And you got to keep practicing that because that's how you get comfortable. And every opportunity you get, people will give you two minutes to, to, to cold speak about any topic you want to, provided that you kind of do it in the right way. And I think this is something that I tend to do a lot. And sometimes it drives people crazy, but I don't care, you know, because the fact is they're not going to come and ask me. So Jay, what book did you read? So Jay, what TV program did you watch? They're not going to do that. You got to just, you got to, you got to kind of broach it, right? You got to cold speak, and uh, that's what I call it, cold speak. There might be some other names to this, but uh, I think it's a good way to practice uh, becoming a more confident speaker because. Uh, uh, speaking is something where you you're under control. You got to take the lead, and people are not going to come to you and say. And I think it'll increase your confidence. Julie, what do you think of this uh, uh, about this? Uh, I call it cold speaking. There might be another better name for it, but uh, what do you think? Like when people, like a lot of people out there, are working on their speeches, but then they think the only time they ever give that speech is if they get in front of the stage, the so-called stage. And what I'm saying is the stage is virtual. There's a virtual stage out there you get to decide when you want to speak about that topic and you create that stage. You don't have to get on the real stage out there. Yes, Jay. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I love the term cold speaking because that's what I feel like sometimes. Uh, part of the changes I have since doing this uh, public speaking and particularly practicing on Speech Talk Live is I have recently made a habit of speaking to strangers. Um, you know, you're sitting in a theater next to someone. You know, I, I, I don't really need to present myself. I just want to make a connection. So I would say, where did you get that popcorn? You know, um, yesterday I waved to someone who didn't see me, didn't wave back. It's, it's terrifying to think, and you're getting rejected. And it's a human ego condition. But um, I like your point that it's all a feedback loop. You know, there's a current uh, change in management philosophy in the sense that success is not as important as information. So um, there's a there's a tech talk there that talks about Google specifically have two parallel projects going in apparently opposite directions. So at least one will fail. But what, what happened was both failed. What, the information from both became a synthesis of a, a, a direct new approach. You know? And also in the field of artificial intelligence, you know in the first milestone is just all failure. So what it is is just collecting information into the feedback loop. Loop. I'm going to stay technical because I don't want to um, dumb it down at this point because um, I don't have the skills necessary to bring it down to a simpler level right now. So I think the you know in the other concept in the computers is bootstrap. You start with nothing, 
So to me, code speaking is the beginning of bootstrapping into something. And then also the, the whether success or not is all part of the information for growth. And it's really discovery because you don't know what you will end up with. Like I didn't know my niece was going to take a deep breath because of my video. There's no way I could make those connections. But co-speaking is reaching out into the dark and trying to connect with somebody, a real human being. I think it's so important. I, I think that human beings are not made to sell. Uh, a sales is a component of connection. I think human beings are made to connect. I will make that distinction. So uh, co-speaking is reaching out in the dark to make a connection. That's how it feels to me. Yeah, I think I think you said it well. Uh, I just use the word co-speak. I think at the end, the uh, the outcome is that, right? The outcome is to, to, to form a connection with somebody. And to form that connection with somebody is uh, because see the thing is the way I look at it is that I mean you, you don't want to become like it, because see here's the thing one of the principles of cold calling is that a lot of times if you think you have something important like I'm just using the sales concept right and applying to cold speaking so you have a lot of things that you really passionately believe in the things that you're doing which you think, if somebody's interested, shows enough of an interest, you could, you want to talk about it, right? Because you got to have like life has you have you, you have some kind of purpose in life, right? In in sales, let's say if you and I are very good coaches and we think we can help people, the people who need help aren't going to come to us. They're not going to just come to us and saying, "Hey, you know, today I want to learn about code." No, you got to get to you got to convince them that. They don't know if they know the solution to a problem, they come to us. A lot of times they don't even know the problem even exists. And that's what you know cold calling does. Cold calling is to kind of hit you by two by four and saying, hey, you know, there's a problem out there that you may not be aware of. And in, in speaking, it's sort of like that. People don't come to you and saying, hey, Julie, you know, I'm just gonna take a wild guess, but I bet you you're into yoga. That doesn't happen, right? <laughs> you have to create that interest so that you said what you just said is right, that the ultimate end result is that you form a connection. But that connection cannot just be formed if you just wait for that person. This sounds very elementary, by the way. This is exactly the advice I've been giving to my son who's in middle school and he's been having some problem with uh, some girls. Like uh, he wants to talk to them, but he doesn't even know how to do that. So I know exactly. I kind of took some of that idea and I said, listen, you know, just talk. If they don't talk, just ignore them for a day. And next day, everything will be fine. So uh, anyway, Julie, any closing thoughts uh, before we end the show? Yeah, I think this is a really important topic. <clears throat> it connects into many things. So I'm sure we'll revisit your, your co-speaking concept again. Thank you. Yeah, that's the term I'm using. I need to develop it further. But I just said, you know, let's just get it out there. And uh, I'll just cold speak this topic. <laughs> Cold topic. This was like not a cold speaking. This was a cold topic. We don't know which way it was going to go. So sometimes you have to come up with cold topics. You don't know where that's going to go. But it seems like uh, it needs further development, and we'll work. I'll work on that and uh, see where we can kind of formalize it. Because I think people out there want to connect, but uh, there's a fear and all this other aspect of it that needs to be discussed. So Julie, any comments? Uh, I think we're pretty much at the end here. Any comment on the show uh, before I close it out? Okay, thanks a lot. So let me thank uh, uh, Julie uh, again for participating as usual. You know, she's a tremendous co-host. She really puts in a lot of effort and this as and today, you know, was a milestone. She finished her 12th uh, video of her pose, which is there to really simple poses to help people. And let me tell you, even if you can do one, that's a big step. But these are 12 simple poses that she just if you just do these believe me that's more if you're going to go beyond that then join some you know fancy yoga class somewhere but a lot of people don't even do that they're so busy so this is designed for people to take some time out of their busy life work whatever and do these simple poses to kind of energize themselves and kind of 
know who they are because uh, th that's what these exercises are for. And at this point, I'd like to say that uh, if you're watch if you're watching this uh, live or watching this later, thank you. Any comments, questions, or suggestions you have, uh, reach out to us. And the la I always like to say, you know, speaking is very important. People judge you very quickly by the way you speak in any situation, no matter what it is. That's what we discussed with cold speaking. And I always tell people, you are how you speak. That's how people judge you. And often you do not get a second chance. So you got to start working on it now. You got to keep practicing often and come up with a methodology so that you are confident in any situation, so that you create that virtual stage. That stage doesn't have to be a physical stage. Every time you're speaking is a stage, and you get to control that. So thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you for the next uh, episode, number 51. And at this point, this is a wrap. We're done. So thank you. OK, Julie, you're going to okay. take a pause? I have to take a break. Yeah. All right, let, yeah, let me I'll just take back. a break. Okay. Three minutes. Yeah. I'm back whenever you are. Okay, all set. Oh, I see you. Okay. Okay, great. So let's see. So, um, so I'm going to give you an update. Uh, okay, what, what did you want to bring? What did you want to discuss? Oh no, let's do the update first. Nothing else important. <clears throat> right. So I, uh, you remember that uh, lady I said uh, who's a development editor? Her name is Nancy Pesky. Yes. So I, you know, I, I hired, I paid her two hundred dollars to kind of give me that initial uh, exploratory call to kind of give me an, uh, give me like an overview of what she thought of my book based on the information that I sent her. And I had to be fair to her because I did send her quite a bit of information. <laughs> I think I overloaded her with information, <laughs> and she was like, "Oh my God, you know, for two hundred dollars, I would like, a, you know." A, uh, the, the thing is, I sent her my manuscript. I sent her a 15-minute video. I sent her a Q&A. So I, I, think, I think I just, after a while, I think she said that this was like the most expensive $200 time I've ever spent. Uh, she didn't say that, but I kind of got the impression that's what she was. Uh, 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 the, the, the thing is that I, I wish somehow she's not video savvy, so I couldn't do a video recording of the of the. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, that really sucks. So, because so I, Jay, just have one eye. You can do it on the phone. There's a number you can call. 
get for free called free conferencing. Okay. And uh, you can get the number and you can record it because that's what I do for the people uh, who are not computer savvy. Because oh, all, all they have to do is call into the number. Right. And then you you can call in as the owner of that number. You get your own private number and then you can record it. Right, right. Because I didn't expect that she wouldn't be able to do that because yeah. I was just sitting there at 10 o'clock yesterday and I said, what happened? And then I see her email. She said, oh, uh, can you please call me at this number? And when I called her, I said, so, but what about all that information I'd sent you? I said, oh, I don't like doing video like that. I'm not set up for that. And I said, okay. Uh, so it's there's a lot of things we discussed in the one hour okay so the main thing let me just see if i have some notes uh, i i was hoping that uh, she would so she has written quite a few books she's co-authored quite a few books so i said let me just listen to her and kind of get her perspective rather than trying to like explain to her what i'm doing because i just wanted to uh so i think one her main comment was that when she looks at the book, she doesn't know what to do with it. Like in a sense that I'm not giving a clear sense of direction. It's got too much stuff in it. And she's looking for something that kind of uh, maps out the path and then tells me how to get to the destination. And I said, I said, I thought I was kind of doing it, but then I kind of got her point when I was thinking about it. Initially, I was like kind of a little like, like taken back. I said, wait a second. I thought my book was pretty clear. But then I could also look at it from her point of view. And the book has a lot of stuff in it. One is there's a whole section on developing the skills. Then there is a focus on delivering the speech. And then there's a third part on how to become a lifetime speaker. And I think what I, I'm thinking of what I thought about it. The, like, so after that, I was like saying, oh, man, that's stuff that she's telling me. I don't think she really, really gets it. Uh, I don't think she got the idea of what I'm trying to do. But then I said, let me look at it from her point of view. If somebody was reading this book, is, does she have any kind of valid point? Because she, this lady is an expert. She's worked with a lot of books. And I said, you know, maybe she's got a point there that I, I'm, I made this book too complex. Now, like if somebody reads it, they really don't know what it's supposed to get them to. What it's, at the end, what will they get out of it reading this? Is it is because if they have somebody has an immediate need, what what can they really do? So one thing I was thinking of is that perhaps my scope in this book is too big. I need to narrow the scope. It's something I think you told me earlier that I have too many books in here. So I am thinking at this point that part that I really need to really work on in this book is just that middle part, the delivery of a speech. So that way I have a clear focus. The other part suddenly mess muddies up the book because the part that Maybe it's not in this book, maybe it's in other book, but if I had to lead with one book, maybe I should just focus on kind of what we discussed in that first segment. If somebody has a speech to give under the constraints, we don't know whether that person has taken a course or not. At this point, the person comes to you and says, I have a speech to give. What are the steps that person has to go through to the point where that speech can be ready in, in the certain steps that I, I outline? that the person has to go through to get that speech done so that at least it's a decent speech. So because that the development part is kind of difficult because she was saying that in one sense, I don't know whether I have to take the Coursera course or do I do this? Do I read your book after I take the Coursera course? He said that wasn't very clear to me. And I initially I thought that I thought it was clear, but then I can see that it, I'm making the person go through a lot of, they have to jump back and forth, go here, go here, come back, do this, do this, do this. She definitely liked the 330 segment, the 330 chapter in the book. She said that was excellent. That's something that I could really get into. Uh, but he said the other parts just kind of just got to be overwhelming for her. So what I'm thinking is that I need to, at this point, start removing a lot of stuff that I think are important and look at it directly from point of like, let's say if Catherine came to me and said, Jay, I have a speech to give, what should I do? And remember, she didn't come to us and saying, hey, help me teach public speaking. Her immediate need was, I need a speech to deliver. Can you help me with that? So I was thinking after working with Catherine a little bit, that perhaps that's the angle that I should, prefer, uh, I should uh, take on how do you get, if you have to give a speech, 
calm down. Here's the steps you have to go through to be ready in certain amount of time. So I'm thinking that I need a much narrow, narrow scope than what I, I have right now. I think that's a great idea because then what you're saying is you're going to speak to Griff. Here's the guidelines, and then you can build your coaching business on top of that. Yeah, it, it kind of dovetails very nicely yeah. into that because I think that whole the whole development public speaking skill is makes the book all because people people who are reading it almost I'm telling them to just disappear in this and then forget about right. it. Right, and because I, you're telling them go take the Kosora club. Class. Yeah, so they're like, I got a book here, but now I don't need the book. <laughs> right, and then I'll never finish the course. So the book is essentially a waste of time. <laughs> right, so I think what I'm thinking is that I have to rethink this book again and saying, look, I got that whole section, develop it better. So talking to her, uh, it was a different kind of experience because she, she's like, you know, she speaks like she's like an expert, right? Right. And she's there to just kind of give you tough love. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, oh my God, I don't like what you're telling me about my book. <laughs> I work so hard. This is my baby. <laughs> and you're not like, no, she, she liked a lot of parts of the book. So I have to be fair to her. And uh, one of the things I told her is like, but I said, but I got a really extensive appendix. And she said, Jay, nobody reads the appendix. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have said that to you six months ago, but you wouldn't have heard it. So <laughs> if I, I kind of said that to you. Yeah, she said <laughs> that appendix is like almost like an afterthought. Like, why is this here? You know, so I said, oh, really? I said, that was my really the thing I was <laughs> hoping people would like. <laughs> so it got to the point that I have to be fair to her and say that uh, she gave me a quick overview on what I, and I think it helped me a lot. I think it was a good investment on my part yeah, because I unless I had somebody focus it in a certain way, I wouldn't have gotten that point clearly. So sometimes when you pay, you tend to listen better. Right. So I agree. I, so I think now I'm rethinking that my book should just focus on, and I don't care about the length, even if it's 120 pages, that's fine, but it, it has to be much tighter and much crisper. So the, the, so the book doesn't become like, oh my God, it's like if, if I'm telling you that I can get you to get your speech ready in this much amount of time, then I have to deliver on that and that's it, rather than right. like, uh, oh, take this course, oh, then you go to do this, then you got to do this, and it's like, Hey, I don't want to know about like I'm not some guy like Quintilian who wrote like nine volumes on public speaking, right? Right. The other thing is time is money. If yeah. you're gonna be a coach, right? So this this woman that I've been working with, uh, we're doing mutual coaching. She said that in one month after she got coaching, her revenue tripled. So. Right. People are paying big bucks for code, and I think that's where your money is going to come from. Right. Um, in addition to online classes, it's not going to be from the book. Right. It's people will spend money when there's sh the shit's hitting the fan. Yeah, right? right, right, right. And if someone has, like Catherine, someone who has to give a big speech, that's kind of like the shit's hitting the fan, you right. know? And I think that's a great market maybe you can do a little market research but i i think that's possible yeah so i'm going to reconstitute the book uh to focus on that and take out entire before part. you even do that yeah i suggest you write up a one page summary okay and send it to your father's clients yeah. or target like 10 or 20 or maybe 10 of your uh father's clients who are business people they might be giving give give you feedback like yeah this works this is exactly what I need from a business problem solution perspective right right and the other thing is I can give it to my friend Sue she's uh, working with Toastmasters yeah I will I will I'll write a draft and I'll let you take a look at it so what so what should it contain so I think this is what you can what it can contain and uh, you know I'm just talking on top of, so it's just a quote, um, take what it's useful. Okay. I think is something like big speeches, big rewards. Okay. Like, like Catherine, she, didn't, she, wasn't, she wasn't asked to make a speech. She went out and find a speech. Yeah. So basically you can say whether being told to make a speech or 
finding a great opportunity for a speech, how can you bootstrap yourself to a successful speech in six weeks? Uh, yeah, the thing uh, the thing I have to be careful is I don't want to like limit myself to time. I just say steps because everybody can determine. No, no, no. Just say six weeks. Six weeks. Because everybody knows it's bullshit. <laughs> okay. Because oh. you know you don't know how many how big is the speech, and you're gonna get something done in six weeks. Right. If somebody gives you, uh, let's say, two hundred dollars an hour for six weeks, for twelve hundred dollars, you're gonna do something for them. Right. Okay. Right. So something like, because people want to know how much money and how much time. Okay, so just say big speech, big success in six weeks. I like weeks. that, big big speech, big reward. Big speech, big reward in six weeks. Okay. Six weeks, yeah, that's underneath it. Like in six weeks, you should be able to deliver this Don't use the word should. Oh, right, right, should, should is a bad word. You know, yeah. Should yeah, is should. a bad word. Yeah, deliver. So, so then what you're saying is... Uh, a simplified, tested methodology. In six weeks, you start with your content, craft a message, clarify the organization, re dress rehearsal, deliver the speech, post mortem. This is your process. Right, right, right. So right. those are the six steps, and then you can. That's it. You know. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the focus. Uh, so basically, this one pager should actually, in, in a nutshell, talk about the <coughs> all the, the 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 six weeks. It's about your book. You yeah. know, Ronald Reagan says nothing has to be bigger like than a, a page. What you're saying is like a one-page proposal. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, uh, not a proposal. More like a um, like a copy letter. Copy. Copy. Like an executive summary. Yeah, executive summary of what the book so is about. You gotta got talk about the problem, your unique solution, the benefits. Right. So you're saying that do that in one page. What, one page. What, what the problem is, what the solution is, and what the outcome. Yeah, but do it in your own style. Yeah. Right. Right. You right. know. Um, but basically, though, those are the the three executive uh, summary pro. Uh, Three basics for executive summary. What's the problem or the mm. opportunity? What's the details, your unique solution? And what's the benefit? Right. Okay. Right. So I Ronald Reagan says everything can be done in one page. Right, right, right. And that could be the beginning of a, a magazine article you can submit, like a query letter. Right, 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 oh. right. Because I, I see that once. Now that you got this together this way, I see that you can write articles about it, not just in blogs, yeah. but submit it to magazines and get paid. Yeah, Maybe right. first free ones, you know, just to get publicity, but your message will continually to be well honed. So right. only like on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have to say that this whole exercise in putting this book at this point. By the way, I forgot to tell you, I did send a draft to Amy to take a look at because there was a Coursera part in there, and I just wanted to get her o approval if she was okay with that. Because yeah, but she's not part of this. Uh, she's in a whole different area now. Oh, right, right, right. No, I just sent it to her because I promised that I was going to be oh, working. Oh, great. Yeah. So just very saying nice. that, you know, I'm making some progress. But, uh, yeah, so that that's just uh, – and now the Coursera part will completely be out of the book anyway, so – it doesn't really doesn't even matter, but uh, but the thing is, I'll tell you this: just getting to this point and writing close to, I think, was my book. Oh my that, god! Yeah, my book was about three hundred and thirty pages. Yeah, uh, it, 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 you have to sometimes just crap. You know, it's just kind of uh, cancel it and say, okay, I need to rethink it, and that's that's hard. Sometimes you take it like, wow all that time I put it, but sometimes if the book doesn't have a focus, it doesn't have a focus. All those words are just like a lot of words, but it doesn't really, it, it doesn't create that experience for the person who's reading it, so. I, I see that as a natural progression. I was just waiting for you to get to this point. Because yeah, so that's a lot of jams. So the, yeah, so that's the it, point I'm at. You know, it, it, it's like, um, it's, it's like part of the growing fishing. up. It's, it's part no, of becoming it's an more artist. Than that. It's, it's like going fishing. You're mm -hmm. looking for trout. So in yeah. the net, you're saying, oh my God, what's all this other shit? 
But once you get the trout out, you're going to find lobsters and salmon. There's a lot more in there, but you you can harvest this pool that you got together. There's a lot more in it than what you're seeing, what you're trying to sell right now. So this is a, tr a, a treasure trove that you can continue to right. dig through it. So I, I, I admire you for doing that, and I think I was just waiting for you to simplify it, you know, uh, yeah. because I know you had to get to this stage. Yeah. It's just like any system, right? In the beginning of requirements analysis, people who are not experienced, the requirement gets so big, it's way beyond the scope of what the project right. can deliver. And right, so you right. pick a piece and do it, but that doesn't mean the rest of the requirements are not important. Right. Right, because typically what would happen is, and kind of feeling I got talking to her, is that <clears throat> a development editor really comes in right during the proposal phase. Right. In my case, it's kind of it's difficult because I'm kind of bringing her into it after it's already in the fourth draft or manuscript form, right? Right. And so I'm kind of basically, because since I'm self-publishing, it doesn't matter, right? And I'm saying, like, okay, I'm essentially now starting it from beginning again because now I have a different kind of a focus is now that I'm going to just focus on the speech part only. I'm not going to focus on developing the skills and how to remain a lifetime speaker. The real, real the reality of the situation is is there are more people like Catherine than there are people like you and me. Which right. is like which is that we're going to go through all of this. See the first part that first part of developing the skills is really about you and me. Yes, but what's there's a lot of more people who's willing to pick more, pick big money to do what you just said. But that sorry, doesn't mean. I got to repeat that again. It, uh, that's not the big point. My whole point, you know, what's really important right now that I want to pivot your attention is you're still looking at it, talking to me about the book. Right. You, you what you really done as you wrote the book is you develop a service, a product of Jay as a mm. coach. And when you look at the book, you can look at the book as what is this, how is this book going to be successful? Right. The bigger question for you before you even put a word onto the page is how am I going to be used su successful? And then the book is just the knife that cuts through that. It's an yeah, instrument. You, 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 so know that, you can look at the book, Jay. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what this lady was telling me, uh, uh, Nancy, that you can't just look at the book, what you just said, that there is this whole thing about the brand, there is the whole thing about, like, like, like you're going to create a community, and then the book is just kind of part exactly. of that. Exactly. The that, book that, is just an instrument. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that kind of was, that's the message she was giving me, and... I'm not sure I was listening to that message that clearly because she kept on telling me that over and over again that that that, that what you need to do is don't just think of this as the book. First, you got to know what your brand is. Then you got to know, uh, you know, who, who's the people that are in your community that you're trying to serve. And then the book is the way to to, to like you said, like it's like an instrument, right? It's like right. a tool. It's and, like a gun, right? And, and, and the it thing is, a bullet. That's all. Right. It's a bullet. It's a bullet. That's right. all. It is. Right, but, but you're the, the gun. You're the shooter, and you're making a gun. Right. You're not making the bullet. Right. The bullet is just part of the gun. Right. And and what I was thinking was like, wow, that's easy for her to say because she didn't come in. She didn't put in all that time in the book. Because when you see everybody is like have their frame, right? My frame is from the book. Her frame is much like what you're saying. I'm. You're in a different, but you're kind of hybrid, right? You're c closer to the book and closer to the the real world, right? She's looking at it more from the the real world, like the big, the business world. Yeah. But the, the whole world. point is, she is still talking about you need to do all those things just to get the book successful. But I'm taking it to a different stage. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you have to take it to your business level because right. for you, Jay, it's not just a book; it's your whole business. Right. So that's why I. Um, she had that learned the former Charlie site with you. Yeah. She has a lot of those insights. In right, there. right. So those insights are great, but until you do it, you don't really pay attention to right. it. They don't, they don't exactly. like mean anything. They're like, oh, those are a lot of words that sound great, but each little thing you miss it because you can't relate it's to too it. much. Right. So like right now, having gone through this book, I can relate to when I read these tips. Now I said, oh, 
that's speaking to me. But right. when you're just reading it, when you, even have, when you haven't even written a book, it's just words, like it's, you're just yeah. reading it. It doesn't do anything to you. It's so, like it's just a stream of uh, watching TV as uh, TV moves through, you know, yeah, instead right, of being right. in the play yourself. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to keep on reminding you, it's not just a book. It's your whole yeah. business. Right. You need to craft a message for your whole business. And the book is just the bullet of the gun you make. Right, right. Right, so that's that's the update. Uh, so I'm going to uh, spend some time uh, rethinking the book again. And uh, and hopefully I'm not going to worry about the length. And like I said, if, I, if the book has a focus, then that'll take care of itself. Because uh, I just want the book to be, uh, like I said, it has to be uh, reader-centric rather than, like, like I think I've identified my persona. That's what was missing. The persona is Catherine is the persona. Like the avatar, like you have to come up with right. some model. Right. That these are the people out there who have to give a speech. And so working with them really solidified my thinking now. Because prior to that, because remember, I had already finished my fourth draft till we started working with Catherine. But right. now I realize that that's my persona right there. That's the kind of people that this book should be helping. That's your avatar. avatar. Your persona is you. <laughs> right, right. That's Cat your target persona. Right. Catherine is my avatar. Oh, your target persona. Target right. persona, right. Persona a of the person. Avatar is actually not the right word because avatar has an imply. It comes from the tradition of gurus. So yeah. avatar is like a guru. She's really not your guru. Uh, she's like that model that I'm she's trying, a model, right? That that's why I to, said that I'm trying to reach to. That's right. the one I'm trying to uh, right. get that's to. Right. That's why I said target persona. Target persona is the same thing. Yeah, model. So she, she's my target persona. That uh, I, I think there's a couple of things you can do before you even reach the book stage. Yeah. One is, like I said, do your one-page summary. Yeah, which, which I'll do it this weekend. Yeah, this, and I then mean, do a market analysis, getting the feedback from potential clients of yours, like right. now that you have a target persona or a model, find the people in your father's business that matches the persona and then do a and then do ask them to read the and say, would they read a book like that or how, or even a coaching business, would they, you know, find a coach like that and how much they're willing to pay. Right, right, right. You right, know, right. so two questions. Would they receive coaching? Would they read the book? Would they use the book as a way to uh, prepare validate for a speech? The credential, validate the credential of you. I mean, the question is, would they read a, if they have a speech to give? Would this book help them? Is that the question or not? No. No. What's the question again? If they have a speech to give, would they use the? Would they find the book helpful? And then would they come out and find? Uh, would they? Would they? If they if they're looking for a coach, would they f find you? Okay. So you always want to remember your core business is coaching. And coaching. Right, right. This is a way to promote my coaching because they'll right. say, "Wow," because what they'll say is, "There's a lot," and well, I can do it if I have the time, but I don't have the time, so it's time to make. So you might as well put that question into your survey. That's all. Right, 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 okay. right. Okay, that's good. I all hope right. I wasn't too harsh. <laughs> well, no, that's that's what uh, you're supposed to do. Okay, but if I am, let me know. <laughs> no, 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 because the thing is that uh, it's better that you are harsh than to find out that the people outside are not being... So you have to almost act like the people who are prospective readers, right? That uh, someone who's like really stuck, like, I got to give a speech to give. Is this book going to kind of calm them down and saying, hey, yes, you can be helped. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think what Catherine was doing was just that. That she had a speech to give, and she told us, right? I was like, "Look, what happened? Around. She went silent again." No, she has a speech today or uh, tomorrow, right? Oh, okay. I emailed her some hints. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think she was overloaded, so I didn't want to send her too much because yeah. uh, because I think uh, she didn't have a lot of time. So at that point, I just said, "Look, you know what? Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, I, I would we just rather step back and let her do it right now, and then if she wants to come on and talk about her experience." We could put that in our, our show. You know what? This is why I suggest you come up for yourself as a vision diagram. Mm. Like a three leaf or four leaf clover. Uh, so this is Jay's uh, mission and vision. I'm doing this. 
And then one of them is book. Another one is coaching, right? Another one's online classes. I don't know if that's it. Maybe coaching and consulting. I would mm -hmm. put a consulting a separate. separate um, I would put consulting a certain a separate diagram because it all opens up different clientele. And this is why I put together. Can you see this? This is the center. This is goals, yeah. vision, and mission. Mm -hmm. And then this is the book, right? This is the book, which is what you're working on. Okay. But there's also online classes, right? There's is also that, is that a, a, Venn, a Venn diagram or what? I, I made it into a, a clover, but oh, you, can oh, use right. a, you can use a Venn diagram, wherever you like. Okay. But the whole point is I want you to make a really big one, like a new spring oh, size. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. You know, you, know, you can buy oh, your flip chart paper. Oh, you just have a board, right? Yeah, I have a board right here. Yeah, you can do the board, but I would suggest you go get some flip chart paper because what you will do is over time, right. you'll have multiple versions of it. Can, okay. can you like photocopy that and email it to me? I, is that I can text you. Yeah, right. Can you can do I that? Can I fax it to you? Yeah. Yeah. Fa fa did you say fax? Text. Text. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, on chat, on phone. I can oh. email. Oh, okay, okay. No, whatever works for you, as long as I... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of it on my phone, I'll send it to you. Yeah, right, text. right, and then I can print it out. Right, yeah. right, right. That, so that. the whole idea is, over whenever you send like your message to your potential client, you want to see the whole picture. So right. even if you're just doing a survey on the book, you want to tie it back into the big picture. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense, that makes sense, yeah. Because I'm hearing that, you know, as an engineer, there's a difference between an engineer and a priest, right? Right. The engineer is only looking at delivering a certain product. The priest always remember the soul. Yeah, right. Why are you doing it? I want you to always remember your purpose. <laughs> right, right, right. No, that helps. That helps. I have to, like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do uh, the next few days to think about this in a different way. Because uh, I think the book kind of had a scope creep. Yeah. And, and then the book just kind of went out of control. And but then that, that's okay, because that's what it's okay, because that's how you uh, practice your craft. Right, right, right. So yeah. A book, you could have done a consulting business. You still had to gone through everything you need to learn there. Right, right, you right, 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 right. It's not much a waste. It's right, all, sure. all necessary. Uh, what what did you want to talk about anything? I I know I've been taking up a lot of your time. No, I, I want I want you to do this. Okay, you're gonna send that to me. I, yeah. Yes, I I want you to like every time we talk about it on on something yeah. that you and I, this is our anchor. We'll come back to this. Okay, yeah. Once I okay. once I see because I can't see it too clearly right now. Yeah, I, I'll send it to you. In fact, I mean, I'll do a Google draw and send it to oh, okay, you. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. And I, don't take too much time, just whatever. Okay, then I'll, s I'll take a picture of it and send yeah, it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want you to um, just go into I'll, I'll, other... I'll take that and put it into Google Drawing, okay? Okay, great. So the, the um, yeah, so I, I'll take one minute and then I have to wrap. Um, I sent you like two people who said they're interested in being interviewed. Well, yeah, I didn't, get the, I didn't get the name or anything. Did you include the names there? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. uh, I one, of them, one of them is particularly interesting for what we want to do, if oh, you're right. interested. His oh. name is Ramesh Nani. Right. And he's a, he's a public speaking teacher okay. on voice and singing. So not so much what we're doing. Right. But, she, but I think he could be someone that we could bring on to do the interview thing. Because it's okay. related to public speaking. Okay. 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 Yes. Yeah, so he's actually does that. Uh, he does that for a living. I don't know if he makes enough money for a living. I don't ask. But he has classes in Udami, oh. and he he consistently publicizes. Oh, okay. It. Yeah. Sure. So. Sure. So we can do like a half hour prep prep with him, and then uh, put bring him on 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 a separate show. We got to come up with a new name for that. Yeah. So I'm thinking like once a month. We will yeah. do the interview program, which is what you said. Yeah, right, right. Then we have to develop a, a agenda and a format. And yeah, stuff. right, right, he, right. He could be willing to 
uh, practice with us. He could be, has he done, I mean, because the thing is like, uh, this would be our, we tell him that this, the exposure he would get would be on the Coursera, plus all the other type of uh, exposure we would provide from social media. We can work all that through you yeah. and I can. I just want to see if you're yeah. interested. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, think, we have to, I think we have to uh, We have to start somewhere and build up, uh, because we have to, initially we'll have to do some of these to get an idea on. Exactly. Uh, because we got to have a focus, like what is the purpose of bringing people on? Like what kind of value are they yeah, going you, to? Yeah, you're going to write something on that for us. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, like like if, if it's a speech, because what I'm thinking of is uh, like, like what are these people, uh, if they're giving a speech, what what kind of information are they giving that would help somebody that are, that are right. going through? So right. I wanted to primarily bring on people who give uh, speeches, who give a lot of speeches and something they have, they have some kind of insight on what they do for preparation, what they do when they're giving right. a speech. So it's the same thing, like, you know, the pre-game, the game, and the post-game. And just tell us what the pre-game is like, what the what the game is like, and what the post-game is like for them. And that's basically the... Yeah. So uh, if you want me to, I will craft a couple of sentences. What I'm hearing here is our interview programs, ultimate audience is people who are interested in being effective public speakers. And we want to interview people who are experienced speakers to learn from them how they prepare for the speech, how they do the speech, and they have any postmortems on the speech. Yeah, right, right. So that way so that they a... can model effective public speaking for our audience. Yeah, so like, for example, if I'm watching a show, I want to know, like, okay, how many... Like, Create a scenario where you suddenly have to give a speech on a topic that you have, either it could be a topic that you're familiar with or a topic that you're not that familiar with. What would you do? Right. And then tell us, what would your pregame be like? What would your game, like what would you do the day that you have to give a speech and what would you do afterwards? And that I think is pretty much the, if you have to explain it, if you cannot explain it that simply, then the show is too complicated. Or too well, complex. Well, that's not... Let's not chop the head off at this point. We're just right, exploring. Right, right, right. No, no, I, 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 I got it. No, I got I think it. That, that's the part that I would find interesting, and I'm sure people who are watching it may find interesting. Like, okay, this is what it's like to go through this uh, to be ready for a speech. Because a lot of people don't get that feeling. They think like the time is not that much, and I think what you'll find is that they take a lot of time. They spend a lot of time. But I want to know what they do. Okay, let's. Okay. I think I got some ideas, so I, I, we can continue. I'm not going to write that. I'm just going to let it gestate. But yeah. I, I, for today, I will just send you this. Okay, uh, sounds good. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. All right, Julie. Thanks a lot. Thanks Thank a lot you. for all your help. Okay. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Bye.